Hello and welcome back to the Sch Museum, where we have another surprise arriving today. Another surprise car. Can we can we call it a car? Car vehicle. I mean, the last thing that we had delivered, car wise, was the MSRT van. Van, car, vehicle. And and this kind of links to that, but we're going to get to it. It's something a bit different now. Obviously, the F1 show car is currently out. The new car kind of relates to that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're doing that thing of teasing too much. Hold fire, we'll get to that in just a moment. But as you know, with each new arrival or addition to the Schmeemobiles here at the Schmee Museum, we always do a check with Car Vertical and more on that in a little bit as well. Now, I've, as people will know from the Schmee on 50 channel, been up to see the GT500, which has finally arrived here in the UK. I had shipped over a few things with it, which are in the boot of the Focus RS at the moment. And I want to run through some of those, some really cool things from my travels in the US and just all sorts of stuff, including even the carbon wheels are actually in there as well. Oh, really? Which is kind of fun. The wheels, whole story. Everyone probably knows that one. We've had quite a few of the cars washed by yourself and by Tom. Yep, we've um, done, we did well actually. We did, I think, seven cars in one day. Seven cars in one day, following Petrol Hedonism Live, which was, of course, out uh, on the fields of Nebworth House. Everything got really pretty dusty. I'm looking around and everything over there looks quite clean. I don't, I don't really know at the moment what isn't clean, but there will be a few more cars that we need to get cleaned up. So I think that's basically for the plan for today, any moment, to show you something that um, you're probably not expecting to arrive here at the Museum. You know what? This also links to what we're about to reveal. Kind of. We're being way too cryptic. Let me show you a few things though, because as you will have seen, when the GT500 came over, it brought with it a few things that I had just picked up along my travels. Some things that I have never shown before, and I'm quite excited to run through some of those today. Of course, Brad, you know exactly what we've got there. I know what that is. That was a late night for Tom and myself, trying to help <laughs> you get back on your way. That's the funny thing. It was like 9 p.m. in New York, and you guys were up here. At like 2 a.m. or something, yeah. I think it was. Upstate New York did what it does, big potholes. So obviously these are the GT500's original wheels that we replaced, thanks to Young Steels. Where's the crack? Um, Where is it? There just it is. here, yeah, the potholes. Can't beat it. Um, but hey, we got there, we got them sorted out. These will now, the pair of them, make some kind of display here. I'm not entirely sure what to do with them, but you know, that is a pretty big memory for me because it was quite a stressful couple of days. This is the kind of thing I love. You might remember when we had the old storage racks here, we had them wrapped with the hoardings from previous gumballs. This is of course from this year's gumball. Um, I don't know how best to open this up right Are now. Are your arms wide enough? No. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. But I always, ask if I can have a piece after the rally, just with all of the sponsors and stuff. I think it looks cool. And with so much space around the garage, obviously we can pop those. Yeah, this would go anywhere. This barn. Probably we should put them all up in barn two. That'd be quite fun. Um, there's something in this box from a chap called Ian in Canada that I want to get to in a moment. But first, I want to show you what I've got in these two fairly hefty boxes, in fact. This is just past the parcel, isn't it? It really Open is. Open a box, pull out a bag, pull out another box <laughs> case. It's like, what's gonna be inside? This is the book that goes with the collection of the Dare to Dream garage that I visited oh, in nice. Toronto. Stunning garage, amazing that they've got this full um, book to cover that. And for those less into the car side of it, they also have a book just about the sneaker collection that's in there, which is in this box. I haven't opened that up yet. So we will get to those a little bit later on for the time being, just gonna leave them packed in here, but I can't wait to have a space and a lounge to have all of these kind of things. I've got so many, the Zenvo book, the Pagani book, you name it, all sorts of different books that will just be cool things for the garage. That's gonna need a team to open. I can't actually do it on my own. Leave that until a little bit later. Okay, that's confusing. Yeah, this is another of the carbon wheels. We're gonna work out where to put all this stuff don't really need to be delicate with wheels that are no longer in one full piece. That is a carbon-tastic steering wheel for a GT500. Another one to touch on a little bit later. We come around here though, because on this side, we also have two other things that I'm gonna get out. This really is past the parcel, isn't it? Literally. It's like, look away this for is a like, This is any child's dream, just box after box after box. Like Christmas time. Superior signs and prints, wait for it. Oh, wow. How nice is that? When my Ford GT was in New York. That's cool. And with the US flag right behind it. The way that's mounted. Oh, I completely forgot. That's where I've been keeping the window sticker for my GT500. Oh, nice. <laughs> I love that I had forgotten that. I should have remembered because 
we don't have this in the UK, but every car in the US has a window sticker, this, which is the complete history of that exact car, you know, the details of that specific car, the spec, everything about it, the original price, et cetera, et cetera. And you've just had um, it hidden under here. And I've just had it wrapped up in there. However long. Yeah, hidden away. Oh, well, that's a really nice thing. I had to be honest. Literally past the parcel. I You've opened up something, you found something you weren't expecting. I can't remember where I picked that up from, but whoever it was, thank you ever so much. This was a gift actually from uh, Aaron Palos, uh, Life of Palos, when I visited um, in Colorado Springs. This is from engraved blueprint art. Check that out. Oh, wow. Full display with all the specs and details of my McLaren Senna. That's really cool. Like these are the kind of things that are just amazing to have on display set up somewhere. So, okay, I've caused enough chaos already. There's that to show, but before we get to that, some other things. We will get to this mysterious new arrival in just a moment, but when you're picking up a new car, buying a car from the market, it is important to run your checks. For example, as I have done with the Aston Martin DBS when I purchased that, or with the Mercedes-Benz C63 AMG Black Series, and this is where the sponsor of today's video, Car Vertical, step in to help save you time and money when you're buying a car. To look up a vehicle's history, for example, to find out if there have been any rollbacks to the odometer, if it's been involved in an accident, if there could be be any other untoward history which might change your purchasing decision. You'll be able to look up the details of previous MOTs, the annual roadworthiness check, you'll be able to see plate changes, you'll be able to see plenty more, and it's always important to get yourself having that confidence about the car that you're purchasing. Now, if a vehicle has been involved in an accident, that information could also be recorded, and in fact, it might even be able to include the images so you can see exactly what the history of that car entails. Now, Car Vertical is available in over 20 countries, access to all sorts of different insurance registries and government databases to find out the history of the car that you might be looking at to dive into a little bit more. And better still, you can get 10% off using the link down below if you'd like to run a car vertical on a car you might perhaps be looking at or to find out a bit more about the history of the car that you own as well. Now, talking about new cars, I think we should probably show you what is arriving here right now. It is actually right here, but there is a reason we've not driven it in. Um, we wouldn't get very far with driving it in. No, we may, I mean, how many horsepower should the car have? This car should have 380 horsepower. But it actually had four manpower. Four manpower. Yeah. Four manpower for good reasons we shall reveal in a moment. We've toyed with it being related in some form to the F1 show car for yep. the latter part of that. Related to the van, the MSRT element of that, yep. related to the Focus RS, the Ford hatchback part of that. But in fact, it is, boom, the M Sport Fiesta WRC from 2021 as a show car that is a virtual reality simulator. So when it comes to this, WRC car in a garage with F1 show car. That is really pretty cool. Obviously MSRT, M Sport Road Technology being the van side of things. And when we joke about the engine, let's have a quick little open up of the pins. A little bit stuck there. Pull that open. There we go. Lift this up. Four man power. Four man power. Zero engine horsepower. But actually it's kind of cool because it's still got everything basically inside. Now, what this is, is a showpiece that's been used as a simulator at different events and things, as our F1 show car was at the beginning. So we have two steering wheels inside because one is connected to the actual steering of the car, the other is connected to the sim. Now, when you're in there with your headset on, if we come around towards the back, more of the pins to open up, which is actually really quite cool. Pop open the boot. Here we go, PC setup. Monitor so you can monitor everything from the back so someone can watch. And like you say, the cool thing that things are left in here, the external reservoirs for the sort of shocks for the suspension are still left in the car. That's all pretty cool. I'll tell you what, this is so wide. It makes the Focus RS look like some skinny little thing, but that was actually yeah. quite beefy when it came out. Got a nice little cheat sheet with some information about the car. Yeah, it would normally have 380 brake horsepower from the 1.6 litre engine. All sorts of nerdy stuff, because obviously rally car first rally car to visit the museum. Yeah. Second race car, kinda. Depends how you look at it. So this is going to be staying for a while. Um, obviously linking to the van right alongside it. That's actually a really cool combo, having both of these. I mean, the cooler thing was when the van was delivered, it was brought on the back of a truck. Yeah. And on the back of the truck was a trailer, which had this. So we had 
a combo of these two together. So now so everyone wild. knows that we've been keeping the secret for a couple of weeks. Oh yeah. Oh well. <laughs> now you know, guys. Now no. we can reveal it. Truth be told, we've been so busy and we had to work out how to get it all up and running. So we wanted to bring it in when we could actually show you how it works, which is what we will have to do somehow now. We need to work out where to put it. We need to get it set up. We need to get it turned on. I tell you what I'm super excited about is when we have this with the F1 car back here. Yeah, that's Because that's be cool. just really cool. And the theme behind the garage has been, or the, the growing theme, let's say, is motorsport. You see that looking around, you know, some of the drivers and tracks and things that I have up on the, uh, the flags. The theme behind the cars themselves with their massive rear wings and all being linked to track derivatives. That's a pretty big wing. Arguably, that's the highest wing in here. I think, or the biggest, I think, yeah. Nah, Senna. Senna, Senna, Senna. But, yeah. but well, Senna isn't quite as high, but then the car isn't quite as high. Actually, probably the Focus wins for the highest wing. Right now. Anyway, um, this is really cool. So we need to do a little bit of tidying up, a little bit of shuffling around, because I want to show you what this is like when it's running. Because you guys have tested it, but I've never, I haven't sat in this yet. Yeah, so we, I think the plan will be, I'll set it up. Yeah. We'll, we'll show sort of brief setup and things. We'll get you in, I was going to say the driver's seat, but it's the passenger seat officially, but the sim yeah. driver's seat. We'll get you, and it's all VR, that's what we haven't mentioned. It's VR. It's virtual so you reality. put a virtual headset. reality headset on and then you can drive. So we're going to load up probably a Cessna Corsa, chuck you into some car, <laughs> maybe stick you on Silverstone and then let you drive and see how well you do. So the first question, which I guess is for me to work out, is where exactly is it going? Tough question, yeah. We need power behind it, which we can do. We've got power kind of everywhere. Yeah. I'm, I'm itching to go, right, give me a few minutes because I need to think about this. We'll work out where to put it. We'll put it into position and then we'll get it started up. We've decided, we're gonna move the van. We are. Um, van's gonna come to here. Sim is gonna go where the van currently is, next oh. to the halo space. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Tim. We've got music. Well, you've got music blaring. It's off, it's the radio. And we have lots of beeps, so we need to make sure that's on. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Your face. Noises. Anyway, the Max Horst. Move it. On the MSRT, that's the V8 soundtrack that you have on this. So that's going to come forwards and kind of out of the way. Right, van is out the way. That means it's pushing time. We're good. There we go. Oh, this is not the easiest thing in the world to move on the slippery, polished concrete floor. Don't crash into the focus. No in here. <laughs> Tim, you're not pushing, I can see. I'm watching you. Well, that's because I thought we were going to hit that post. You're the driver's side, other side. Straight. Tom with no mic has the step. Yeah, the step is basically to stop people, because obviously this was taken to shows. This stops children or the general public stepping on these rather large side skirts. And it makes it a lot easier to get in because wide side still, very extreme roll cage and a very extreme bucket seat. Yeah, so. with the ears. So how do we start this up? So. We have connected it to power. We have we'll get an extension. Yeah, it won't stay to, like that. Yeah, not good. And then pretty much. It's pretty dark back here. It is. Press the on button on the PC and things will start to brighten up a little bit. Eventually, we'd be standing in our lounge right now. Yeah. Eventually. But for the time being, it's the lounges inside a Fiesta rally car. <laughs> I heard beeps. That means things are starting to load up. Steering wheel's illuminated. Yep. Which means we can log Screen in. Screen is on. Onto here. I'll let you do the password stuff. That's all good, we're done. And then it starts loading everything up. So we'll open up Steam, we'll open up a set of Corsa, and then we can get you sat down, get the Give VR on you, and see how you do it. Sweet. Do you know what? I'm going to try and step in with the camera in my hand. This is probably a bad idea. Oh, not too bad. Nice and easy. The benefits of being a little bit smaller. Squeeze in. Here we go then, jump ahead a little bit and we have a Cesso Corsa loaded up. This is what we can see from the monitor in the back. And in the front of the car, we have Tim with a VR headset on driving around the Silverstone GP in a Ford Mustang. We're keeping the Ford theme going. So, Tim, say hello. How's it going? Are you enjoying yourself? Yeah, this is quite um, trippy really, because obviously the GT500 has not yet made it here, but I am driving a Mustang. It's a pre-facelift Mustang. We've got the old school dials rather than the full digital screens. But yeah, on track at Silverstone, um, working out what I'm doing, trying not to crash too much. Oh, got a bit of a slide there. Oh. It is a Mustang after all, Nicely isn't it? Nicely held, Tim. Let's see how good Tim is here. Oh, bit loose, bit loose. 
Around he goes. He's done quite well though, to be fair. I'll give him that. How can we troll him? Can we get through down like poke him? Bit that. Brad's got a cheeky look on his face. Because you want to film something, but I'm not sure quite what. We're gonna go and have a look at this mysterious box that I mentioned earlier and actually get this opened up. The box that I picked up, as I mentioned, from Ian in Canada, who's very kindly let me bring this back here after many, many years of it being stored away. And this makes very little sense at the moment. This it's makes no sense at all. Packaged. All I know is we've been having a lot of fun on that sim so far and probably wasted I way bet. too long. But, this, what could possibly be in this? this? It's gonna need more than one person. Yeah? It's actually surprisingly heavy. How do I? Can we, can we call him back up? Back up, Tom? Is there anyone? Is, is anyone there? We have, we have someone. Tom, we need, apparently we need backup. So and, open this. And help. I don't know what this means. And a big space. So we're gonna to have to come over oh, this no. way. <laughs> Tom, Tom looks very concerned and I'm concerned too. I'm going to sprinkle water over it and it's suddenly going to become huge. Oh. Is it a slip and slide? Does this oh, even no. open? Have you got any clue? I think we spoke about this at the time, you guys. Obviously not on the video, so nobody on the video would know. We speak about it a lot. We do speak about it. Hence, we're both very <laughs> right now. Oh. We were still speaking at 1am, Tim. We speak about it a lot. Oh. It looks like a slip and slide. Are we going slip and sliding? In here, build a ramp. <laughs> That's dangerous. That's <laughs> really dangerous, you just jump off. Okay, what is this? This is... Oh. An original... I think I know what it is. Do you remember? I remember. Oh, I know what yeah. this is. Okay. We, we had okay. this conversation and... Oh, okay. I, I can one, give a bit of a clue. Large. It's a very large sign. It's actually a billboard poster from the side of a highway. It smells like very it's, funky. But, but it's not recent, it's from the 90s. Yeah, hence it smells a bit funky. Yes. How do we... Gosh, it's <laughs> massive. Hang on, hang on. I don't Wait, know you pull that got... one that way. Have we actually got enough room? I think you're the wrong way around. I think the... <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a highway billboard, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It needs a clean. Oh no, you're the right way. This is good. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hang on, let me hold here. Come and stand on, come and stand on that end. Stand on that end. Where's Mark? <laughs> Mark on 50, help. There we, go. there we go. This is an original Rothmans Williams FW19 billboard best, poster. I've got a better idea. You two spin it, I'm going up there. That's how we'll see it a lot. So you can better. actually see it. We should be the ones up there holding We should hang it, hang it down. Maybe. Let's give it a go. <laughs> I don't know which way we're doing this. Let's fold it in half. No, I think, I think Brad should go up. We should spin this. You spin it, let me go let's, up. Let's run around. Up we go, past <laughs> Rothman's one and Rothman's two. Land of swatches. <laughs> well, it just about fits into frame. This is, this is massive. This thing's absolutely gigantic. On track to conquer the world. Sponsor of the Rothmans William, Rothmans Williams Renault Formula One racing team. Rothmans Racing. It's a lot clearer from up here. <laughs> That's pretty cool. How long is that? It must be like eight Big. meters, nine meters long. Big. So that was obviously back at, at period the poster that they used when they were sponsoring the team and obviously that's the graphic of the uh, fw19 that we have and this obviously when it was no longer current was taken off from being an advertising promo uh ian had it at the time he actually lent it to a local venue who were displaying it for many years it came off it's been stored away and now we have it here and it looks super cool yeah that's very cool now where do we put it where where can we even fit it the question on our minds right now is that obviously I think it was at a go-karting center and it's been folded away for probably 10 years since it was taken down five years, 10 years, something I'm not quite sure. It's very creased. Now, if we can hang it probably under its own weight, a lot of the creases will come out, 
but this is possibly where we need an expert on this. Yeah. Somebody if anyone might. deals with this kind of material, signs, billboard signs, and knows how we can decrease. It certainly needs to clean. We probably need to get here and like clean it while it's out on the floor somehow. I don't, yeah. Soap and water and some elbow grease, I think. Something like that. Jump ahead, Tom and myself have run out for a quick errand in the MSRT Transit. We're keeping this Ford theme going and we're actually keeping the Williams FW19 Rothmans Formula One cars going. So we're down at carspace.co.uk because we have some paint ready for our F1 car. So it's for professional use only. And that's why we're not using it. It's a good job, yeah, we're not <laughs> painting it. So Paul at carspace.co.uk, as you may remember, actually gave us a load of paint samples uh, as well as a spectrometer when we went up to Tom Hartley Jr. to have a look at his Williams F1 car to match the paint. And at that stage, Paul said, look, I really want to be a part of the project. I know you've got someone painting it, but I'd love to supply the paint as well. And he now has. So we've just come and collected that. Um, we've got enough of the blue. We've got some of the white and the rest of it will all be wrapped by the guys at Dub Customs. I find it really comical that we've spent quite a bit of time bundling wheels, tires and quite large items into the back of the Cupra, the Focus, you know, the G63 when we had it. Yet since having good old transit, We've actually put nothing big in it. Yeah. That's how it goes. It'll happen. Oh, look, another transit. There's another transit, HRO and service. So, paint has been dropped off at Godelman's. We're now heading back to this museum. We are indeed. And figuring out what's next. Tim is, I think, there still, hopefully. Yeah, and I've just had fun looking around John's. There were some lovely, lovely cars in for various bits and pieces. I've said it again. Um, but there was a lovely uh, Rolls Royce Wraith that I think I've spent the last 20 minutes oogling over. Yep, a very special and, one. Um, yeah, Brad has had to drag me away and say, no, we have work to yeah. do. Plus so. many other special cars in there, which is very Lots cool. of other special cars, which unfortunately we can't show you at the moment, maybe at some point in the future. Um, but yeah, we're on the way back. Transit's doing as well. And um, I think we should probably get some lunch on the way. So uh, yeah, let's head that way. You're back. Yep, we've dropped off the paint. So the F1 car can actually like go back to, or start going back to Together. That's the plan. And you know what? I'm quite looking forward to seeing the F1 car and the rally car together. Yeah, it's going to be a cool combo. Two liveried up motorsport vehicles. The thing now, though, is I need to head off for the afternoon, which means I'm leaving you guys here with a new VR sim. I know where the day is going. <laughs> I'm going straight over here. Yeah, literally straight onto that for the, probably the rest of the night. I've done like two laps, once in a Mustang, once in a 458 and I'm gonna come back and have to play catch up to be able to lap anything like you guys. But anyway, for the time being, I'm gonna say this is super cool um, to have this here. Obviously, there's more to come for today, but I need to go jump in the car and get on the move. It's car washing time. It is. And I've decided we're gonna start with the hardest one, but we're not actually starting with the hardest one. That makes sense to you, probably not to these guys. Does it make sense to me? Oh, it doesn't even make sense to you. No, I think I'm a bit confused. Is this the first car we've washed this week? Okay, I, yeah, I was going to mention that we'll run through what's been done. <laughs> STO has been cleaned, Lusso was cleaned, but that has disappeared. Yes. Um, C63, LT, these three, GTA, SLS and Vantage Roast have been done. So all that's left is the Elise, which we're going to do last, the SF90, which will come at some point, and these two, which are both awful to clean, lots of funny shapes and curves and things. But yeah. Which is we'll why okay. we avoided these the other day, because they are the most difficult cars to clean because yep. of all the aero. So you take smart charger straight off as usual. Today, I think we tackle these first and then we get the hardest out of the way today, at least. And as you can see, really needed the massive patch missing in the dust there. Yeah. Um, just from so where they were sat not, over the weekend. They're not dirty, dirty. They're not the dirty you'd expect, like with mud splattered up them from dirty no, they've, roads. they've just been sat in they're a dusty, dusty field. Yeah, so it's quite easy to clean up, luckily, which is good. Um, yeah, I guess yeah. I should come around the back in a second once you're in. We'll get a cold start and then get it out, get the pressure washer out, get some snow foam action and clean some cars. All right, so first up, we have the center to be washed, as we've said. Brad is there ready with his gun, snow foam gun, of course. Time for the satisfying bit. It's so satisfying. Why would Tim ever want a blue center when he can have it white? Because this way he gets it both. 
and it's cheaper. I'm not so sure the white would stay on if we drove it, but yeah, sure. There's only one way to find out. Let's go for a drive. Yeah. No, let's, let's keep cleaning. Let's clean it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although that said, it was real fun driving this to and from the petrol hedonism event, obviously. It's one of the first times I've kind of got this thing out on the road and uh, it's raw. It's very, very raw. We'll get this one rinsed off, get it mitt washed, and we will join you guys in a bit. There we go, fast forward. Senna is now clean and dry, and now it's time for the Ford GT, which is equally as dusty. If you look at the rear wing here, I just still a don't few fit. Thing that you still don't fit? No. Okay, well, start it up and we'll go outside, and then you can get out, and then you will <laughs> fit. You'll fit into the outside. I will, yeah. <laughs> Okay, and now it's time for Ford GT, fully covered in snow foam. I know we say it all the time, but it's so satisfying. And then obviously, just see the colour breaking through. Well, you could until Brad... Not anymore. <laughs> you could until Brad came back with the snow foam lance. But that is looking glorious. So obviously this will be left to dwell for a while before we rinse this off, give it the mitt wash, and then pull this one back inside. Brad, what one are we doing next? What's that? What are we doing next? This. No, after this. Oh, uh, SF90 or Los Feliz. Yeah, which one? I don't know. I'm trying to tell well, the guys what's coming up. One of them's easy to get off because it's got a lift with loads of space. One of them's got a huge billboard sign in front of it. Yeah, we probably need to figure out how to move that. And I know it's like a motorway billboard, but I'm quite concerned that it's a bit old, bit fragile, and we yeah, might we don't want to damage break it. it. You might damage it. I might damage it, yeah. We'll more. figure it out, but yeah, one of those two obviously is coming next. Okay, let's see which one it is. Time for a rinse of Firefly, which is looking ridiculously bright in this. Oh yeah, you're on brand. I am. I completely, by accident, Lotus. I'm wearing the right jacket. Lotus. So this thing is looking ridiculous in the sunshine we currently have. Like, I can't really see the screen, so I can't really see how it should be looking, but it's, it's nuts. Crazy, crazy thing. So this will be in SF90 out. And then I guess we call the, call the video a day, we call it a day. And go home and chill after getting all of the cars clean over two days. And having some cool things. Actually no, probably not going home, because I'm probably going to come back in here after. And go and jump back onto that and drive some cars and things. Alright, so as you can see, that is set to the right height for the Elise. Wow! And here you go, you're now at eye height with me guys. Like, you can't see out there, yet a car can fit underneath it. It's insane how small this little thing is and how bright it now looks again. Absolutely crazy. Right, let's get Brad out of this. Already finding bugs. That's the problem with a color like this. Bugs are immediately attracted to it. So yeah, let's get this dried, get this parked up. Get the SF90 out. Okay, so it's time to get a little Firefly back up on the lift. And well, I'm actually giggling to myself because Brad said, I'll put this one on the lift. Proceeded to jump in the car and the first thing he did was put his seatbelt on. Yes, that's right. He put his seatbelt on to park the car, which is um, quite a funny one. Just asking for a little bit of guidance, but he's absolutely fine. Got to be nice and careful because it does get really low down the front. There we are. Keep rolling. And that will drop. There we go. Nicely in to our Ben Pack auto stackers, which, yeah, looking good. Looking good. Now, Brad is just through the shutter washing the SF90 at the moment. While I have come inside, with the Mercedes scooter, which we have just given a quick jet off, and that has come up looking much better because Tim often mentions that we have made this quite dirty. So we've cleaned it up. Now I'm just gonna get the big boy blower on it, just get any of the uh, the water off there, and hopefully, well, hopefully he notices that we've actually cleaned it. And there we are, last one done. So, Brad, for whatever reason, has decided to fire the engine to move it from there to there, but, so no one's going to complain, well, other than Tim. <laughs> there we go. At least it's going the right way with this one. There we go, slowly back into the space next to our rally car. Of course, what today's video has all been about is the 2021 M Sport Fiesta rally car, which 
actually have a rally car here inside this museum, which still seems a bit unreal. Huge thank you to the guys at M Sport and MSRT for making this happen because, well, we're going to lose way too many hours playing inside that. Anyway, SF90 is parked back up. Let's see what's next. Last one, Brad's just going to park up the Mercedes scooter. Now that that's obviously all nice and clean again. Yes, 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 I can see you sit. Oh, obviously you need help lining it up. <laughs> no, that's definitely a bit bent. Still a bit bent. Oh, oh, that's about right. That's about right. There we go. <laughs> that's not gone well, has it? Can we get a 180? This is where everything goes really wrong. Probably. Yeah, boy. Okay, skills, skills. All right. Everything is now washed, cleaned, parked back up. The DBS is not here, and neither is the Lusso because as you saw earlier on, Tim has gone away on an errand with both of those, which I'm sure you will see. Shmi 150 channel? Yeah, Shmi 150 channel. You'll see on the Shmi 150 point. channel shortly where he's gone with those two. Everything else is parked up. Look, I say everything, we still have to do the focus, but we anticipate Tim is gonna jump back into daily driving that shortly, so there's no point giving that a wash, knowing he's only gonna get it out and get it dirty. But, rally car. I know, I've literally just said yeah, it, but we, we have a rally car. I cannot wait just to spend many, many hours. Like, I'd love to go home right now, but I think my plan is to pack up my stuff, make sure, you know, get files transferred over, usual bits before yep. I go home, and then go and sit in that for many, many hours. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing as well. I've got a couple of emails to sort out from today where we've been washing cars, a few bits to, to just sort out in the office, and then I think I'm going to be joining you, and we're going to be taking turns getting in and out of the rally car, which isn't the easiest thing in the world to do if you're someone like me. But that is true. But you make it happen, because how cool... Like, at no other point will I ever be able to say, yeah, I've sat in a rally car and technically driven one around a track. That is Very true. Very technically. That is true. Also, we have to give a massive shout out to Car Vertical, today's sponsor of the video, where you can basically find out any hidden things to do with the car you may be buying. Anything you need. So if you guys are looking at an upcoming purchase, do make sure to check out Car Vertical and see if there's any hidden history on the car you're about to buy. Yeah, and 10% off if you use our link down in the description do go and get that one. Now, hopefully you guys have enjoyed coming along on what, again, has been a bit of a random day, cleaning the cars up after Petrol Hiddenism Live. Thank you very much, Giro. And of course, the delivery, I think we've said it already, our rally car. So I think me and Brad are gonna go and spend the night playing with this. And for now, till next time.